Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to start with a quick overview of what we're going to do this semester. Um, if we just firstly look at, we're going to have, I know you guys did parents and subsidiaries last year. We're going to expand a lot on that. Um, so yeah, let's just quickly do an overview. We're going to have a parent uh, most of the time, always, and then a subsidiary most of the time. Um, there are a few, few, a few key questions we need to ask to determine whether it is a subsidiary or whether it is a different type of investment. Okay. The first question we're going to ask is, do we have control? And we'll get to de the definition of control in a while. Um, but basically, if our answer to that question is yes, we will have an investment in a subsidiary. Um, that would always mean we have more than 50% voting rights, so at least 51%. If we have 51% voting rights, that means we control the entity, but we don't necessarily own 100% of the entity. Okay. Control is always either 100% or 0%. Everyone happy with that? Okay. In our separate books, um, for a subsidiary, we're going to account for it as per IS 27. And if it is in our consolidated financial statements, it's going to be as per IFRS 3 or 10. So you guys can see there's a difference between those. And that is the whole reason for group financial statements. All right, if our answer to that question in the beginning was no, we do not have control, we need to ask whether we have joint control. The answer is yes, we have one of, one of either two options. We can either have a joint venture, um, that's this one. There we will have uh, between 1 to 50% of the voting rights. Hello. Oh. Thank you. Um, and we will have a contractual agreement. All right, so in this case, there will usually be two parties. Um, the one party may have 2% voting rights and the other party will have 50%, for example. So neither of them control the entity, but because they have a contractual agreement, they decided, okay, cool, we will vote together. Um, so that gives them 52% of the voting rights and that gives them joint control. All right. The other option is we can have a joint operation. All right, so a joint operation um, is not a legal entity, or it doesn't have to be. Um, this, for an example, you buy a racehorse, and your friend has a racehorse. So to save some costs, you guys um, keep them together, together in the stalls. You keep them together. You feed them the same thing. The vet comes out for the same thing. All right. So in the end, you will be responsible for 50% of the expenses. Um, you'll be entitled to 50% of the income if they win races or whatever. Um, and you, obviously, your horse stays your horse. So you will be entitled to 50% of the assets, if we can put it that way. All right, so as I said, it's not necessarily a legal entity. Um, and these are accounted for in our separate financial statements, you'll see per IFRS 11 and per our consolidated financial statements in IFRS 11. So just as a summary, this is not a consolidating entity. The journal entries will pass in our live financial statements of the parent. Hmm, sorry. Hi financial statements of the parent. All right, so we're going to do it once, and that's it. We don't consolidate any separate journal entries for those. OK. If we said no, we do not have joint control, we need to ask whether we have significant influence over this entity. If our answer is yes, we'll have an investment in an associate. That'll be between 20% and 50% of the voting rights. So we have a portion of control, but we don't actually control the entity. Um, this will be your non-controlling interest some of the times if we look at the subsidiary side of things, okay? So we'll get to that again. Um, again, in our separate financial statements is IS 27 and consolidated is IS 28. Um, you'll see all of them in the separate financial statements are as IS 27. 
So it's the same um, principles in the separate financial statements, just a little bit different in our consolidated financial statements. Over here, we do have the same standard governing those two. The accounting treatment will be very similar. There will be a few differences, but very, very similar. Okay, and then the last question, if we do not have significant influence, do we have significant, in, uh, sorry, insignificant influence? Um, if the answer there is yes, we have an investment in an equity instrument that'll be between 1 and 19% of the... Okay, seems like the recording's just carrying on. Let's hope it works. Okay, let's just carry on. I hope nothing got lost over there. All right, um, investment in equity instruments, that'll be between one and 19% of your voting rights. Okay. So you guys will um, anticipate that voting rights are different than the shares con or the investment in shares. All right, um, it could happen via contractual agreement, via shares purchased. There are a few ways um, we can do this. All right, so then just um, if I summarize this really quickly, if we look at um, all these entities over here on this side of the page, for them, in order to get, oh, sorry. Sorry, there's a thing Ah, okay. Sorry. Okay, let's just give it a moment. Right. Okay, so just um, the line I drew over there was over that part of the page. For all of these entities, we will buy um, shares or uh, interest. Okay. For this entity over here, the joint operation, hello. We won't necessarily buy shares, but we could. All right, so just to separate them like that. Um, yeah, and buying shares would give you voting rights. Good, everyone happy with that? Then um, just another distinction I want to make. The entities, no, yes, the entities in this part, number one, two, A, and three, will be the ones we consolidate, and the other two we will not consolidate. All right, but we'll get to the gist of that in a moment. All right, then. So that is in the books of the parent. So we can have an investment in a subsidiary. We can have a joint venture, joint operation, associate, or an insignificant investment. Um, you can have all four of those in the exam. You can have three of them. Um, depends on what they ask you. There will most probably be more than one. Um, probably three of them at least. Then, in the books of our subsidiary, we can also have another subsidiary or a joint venture, joint operation, associate, or if there's nine investment. Okay, so in the exam, you can expect to have at least one sub with any one of these instruments, let me just get my highlighter over here, um, any one of these, um, that is what we call a horizontal group, vertical group. Okay. Um, you probably won't have more than one of these companies 
um, but one of these will definitely be there. And then your parent, like I said, can have any one of those five different combinations of things. All right, and then another thing we're going to be doing this semester um, is changes in ownership. Um, so that'll basically be if we as a parent have investment, invested in an entity and we decided that we want to invest more or less, okay? So the ones we're going to be looking at is if we have an investment in a sub, we increase our shareholding and we still have an investment in a sub, okay? So maybe it went from 80 to 100%, okay? Um, another one we'll look at is uh, if there's nine, nine, we buy such a significant additional portion that we end up with a sub. Okay, let's say we went from 10 to 70%. Okay, then we'll have decreases. We'll have a sub going to a sub due to a sale of the investment. 